Hello and welcome to Jill Cameron Creations. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating two cards with one die. We're using the Full of Joy Stampin' Die Set from Concord and Ninth. This is a simple stamp set and a really simple die set. The die set is actually meant to go as a uh, triple fold card, but we're going to use it just for a card front and then we're going to use the inside of the joy. And then we're also going to use a stencil by uh, scrapbook.com. I like to sketch cards out every once in a while and I have a book full of card sketches and this is just the ideas that I have in my head for it, especially if I've never used a stamp or a die before. It just gives me a good place to start and uh, that kind of thing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually do two ink blended backgrounds. I'm going to do one in shades of blue and one in shades of purple. I'm starting with blueprint sketch salty ocean and tumbled glass and i'm using distress oxide inks just because i wanted that deep buttery soft velvety look on my background here and i'm using domed ink blending brushes and i'm just blending the color on really really pretty heavy here uh I, just because i wanted that velvety velvety look i didn't want it to be super super bright but i still wanted the bold colors if that makes sense it does in my head anyway and that's okay so I'm blending these on I do go back and forth between the colors a little bit here and there and blend uh, make sure that the, the delineation between the two colors kind of disappears of course they're not perfectly blended but after you get everything on the cards you really can't tell and it looks absolutely gorgeous so don't forget when you're making cards don't ever judge a work in progress uh, make sure that you are looking at it as a whole, as a finished product, and not as a work in progress. Because I could have stopped right here and meant, man, that's an ugly background. I'm just not going to use it. But I proceeded forward with it and went went on through and went, I really like the end result of this. The, gore, the cards are absolutely gorgeous. So, because it looks like a big, huge, weird eye to me at this point. So, I still went and, and powered through on this. Uh, for this particular card, we're also going to use some embossing paste and glitter on top of the embossing paste. I will stress, if you're going to do what I'm about to do, make sure your background is dry before you do it. I did not. So, I had some glitter stick in a few places. Thankfully, this glitter doesn't stand out too much. Um, but make sure that your background is completely dry before you add like glitter to it. Um, we're, what, what I'm going to do is actually use the stencil over top of it and put some embossing paste on it and then I'm going to add glitter on top of that. When I'm stenciling, I like to tape my paper down to the back of my stencil instead of taping my stencil down to something to hold it in place because it just allows me to move my paper around instead of me moving um, it just allows me to move everything around how I need it to be moved. I'm just using a plastic palette knife to smush around all of my uh, embossing paste here. And I'm going to peel this off very carefully and look at that bright white crisp background there. Now I'm going to sprinkle on this is snowflake tinsel. And I'm going to tap off the excess. And then we are going to heat all of that up and it's going to leave a texture. It's not going to be like, oh, nice and smooth with a, with puff behind it. It's going to be a texture to the embossing paste with a little bit of glitter mixed in. And that's exactly what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to look like it was little rough snowflakes in there. And you can see that some of the glitter, the, the glittery uh, mess is on the background. And that's okay. But if you don't want that, make sure that you let your background dry before you do this. Uh, I'm going to heat this with my heat tool for just a moment and get all of the embossing powder all nice and melted into the embossing paste.
next we're going to be using our purples. I'm using Wilted Violets, Con Dusty Concord, and Shaded Lilac. My Shaded Lilac was seriously saturated. So when I put it on here, it went crazy. It just, see, it just oversaturated my pa my paper. I mean, it was just, it was leaking around the edges and everything. It was oversaturated. So I went with it and ended up covering the entire paper with the, the, the shaded lilac. And I go back and forth between the colors a little bit. I didn't ditch the panel. I didn't um, start over or anything. I just went with what I had and worked with it because sometimes that's what you got to do and I just went back and forth it looks like a hot mess right now you can see I got it all over my fingers and I'm going to now take that dusty concord and go in that in between area here and the post-it note is to try to keep me from getting ink all over my fingers so I don't have ink inky fingerprints all over my background piece there and in the end I really, really, really liked this background. After I ended up going back and forth over it, it softened out a lot. Um, but then it also had really, really bright spots of color in it because I went over this with the Wilted Violet in its entirety. It wasn't exactly what I wanted because I wanted it to be a gradient of color from the inside out. But at the same time, it's still absolutely gorgeous in its own right. So I was very pleased with it in the end. So I'm going to put this over in my overspray box. I'm going to tape this down because I'm going to spray this. And I'm going to spray this with a glitter spray. And remember we're using Distress Oxide ink, so they're reactive with water. So I'm going to put this in my overspray box and I'm going to spray this with glitter spray. And then I'm going to dry it. And then I'm going to move my stencil a little bit. And we're going to spray this with um, White Picket Fence Distress Spray as well. After I finished spraying with the white picket fence spray, I did hit that with my heat tool and go ahead and dry that. However, I didn't think y'all needed to watch it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut our two panels for our with our joy die. This is kind of a two-part die because it has the big joy, but the center part of the O needs to be cut out. And I'm going to go ahead and cut two panels of this because I'm going to stack up joy twice for both of them. So it has J-O-Y that is also dropped out of the center of these. So we're going to use both parts of this to make two different cards. And 
to make sure that I align the O's correctly so that when I stack up the big the big joy uh, with the base on it I want to make sure that that's aligned appropriately so for the first one I'm just going to align that center O uh, just like I normally would I'm going to align that up visually I'm just taking out all the little parts here and pieces all the other little letters carefully removing all of the extras now I'm going to line that up real careful make sure it's about where I want it put a little piece of washi tape on it to hold it my cutting plates are a little bit bowed just needed a flat surface there for a second so I put that back in I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6 for my die cutting and now I'm going to stack up the one that I've already cut on top of it so that I can get a nice alignment here. So I just fit it in like a little puzzle piece. Sorry, it's a little bit down in the corner there. And I just pulled that top off of it because it came right off very easily, no problem. But I just fit it in there like a little puzzle piece because it's not on the inside that I was worried about it. I was doing on the outside, making sure that it fit. Now we're just going to take some adhesive and liquid glue and glue these two together. And then also the centerpiece for this. I'm using Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive here. Just little beads all the way around everything and pop those together. This went together easy peasy lemon squeezy because that bottom is just like, bam, it's together. Done. See? <laughs> That's probably the easiest die cut sediment I've ever put together. <laughs> I'm going to put my O's together real quick. And then we're going to do the J-O-Y on the other one as well. And then we're going to put together the rest of this card. Super simple cards. Don't forget to head over to the blog. Of course, all of the stuff that I use, all the products I use are listed below in the description and over on the blog. I have some SVG files from previous posts. You can sign up over on my website for the Christmas in July series and you'll get from the very beginning of the month uh, all of the posts in that series along with my welcome email series that has some freebies in it as well and for the rest of the month I'm also going to have a couple more SVG files in there for free too and over in my shop I have a couple of new Christmas things that I'm going to be putting out this week too so you'll have a link to that and check those out that's over in my Etsy shop it's Jill Cameron cards over on Etsy you can find me there and check out a bunch of SVG files I have a bunch of slimline stuff over there because it was there for a while it was a really rough drought for slimline stuff so I made a bunch of slimline stuff for SVGs for uh, Cricut and Silhouette user card makers and scrapbookers and you can use it for just about anything you want to. A bunch of other things over there too. So check that out. And I'm going to stamp out the rest of these cards with our sentiments. There is also this tiny little banner that's included in this. You can see it in the top left hand corner up there. And I'm going to die cut two of those for the second card. And uh, stamp the sentiments on that too. Uh, with a little bit of foam tape. Uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy cards went together very very quickly very easily I'm just going to glue the sentiment the die cut sentiments down on here and then add I'm going to add actually glitter gloss pen to this and cover this in glossy accents and then for the other one I'm going to add Nouveau glitter drops to it and it picks up the color of the distress oxide ink through those drops because remember it's Re reactive to wet stuff so that is always always unique to see because it reacts differently every single time so hang around and check that out I'm just gonna play a little bit of music while I finish up these cards and head over to the blog and check out um, the Christmas in July posts thanks for joining me have a good day